The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Senator Rubio. Welcome, Mr. Tillerson. Do you believe during the 2016 presidential campaign, Russian intelligence services directed a campaign of active measures involving the hacking of emails, the strategic leak of these emails, the use of internet trolls, and the dissemination of fake news with the goal of denigrating a presidential candidate and also undermining faith in our election process? Uh, Senator, I have ha I've had no unclassified briefings because I've not received my clearance yet. However, I did read the interagency report that was released on January the 6th. Uh, that report clearly is troubling and indicates uh, that all of the actions you just described uh, were undertaken. Uh, based on your knowledge of Russian leaders and Russian politics, do you believe these activities could have happened without the knowledge and the consent of Vladimir Putin? I'm not in a position to be able to make that determination. Uh, again, well, that's indicated in the report, but I know there's additional classified information Mr. that might Mr. Tillerson, inform you've, my You've engaged view. in significant business activities in Russia, so I'm sure you're aware that very few things of a major proportion happen in that country without Vladimir Putin's permission. So I ask, based on your views of Russian politics and your experience, is it possible for something like this involving the United States elections to have happened without Vladimir Putin knowing about it and, uh, and, and authorizing it? I think that's a fair assumption. That he would have yes. needed to. If Congress passed a bill imposing mandatory visa bans and asset freeze sanctions on persons who engage in significant activities undermining the cybersecurity of public or private infrastructure and democratic institutions in the United States, would you advise the President to sign it? Uh, I would certainly want to examine all, all the corners, all four corners of that. Well, I just, those are the four corners. We would sanction people who are involved in cyber attacks against the United States and interfering in our elections. Uh, the threat of cyber attacks is, is a broad issue, and those are coming from many, many corners of the world. Uh, certainly this most recent manifestation, and I think uh, the new threat posed in terms of how Russia has used uh, this as a tool, uh, that introduces even another element of threat. But cyber attacks are occurring from many nations. So no matter where uh, so they come from, if they come from Belgium, if they come from France, I don't, if someone is conducting cyber attacks against the United States and we pass a law that authorizes the president to sanction them or actually imposes these sanctions as mandatory, would you advise the president sign it? Uh, I think it is that second element, uh, Senator, that you just described that leaves the executive branch no latitudes or flexibility in dealing with the broad array of cyber threats. Uh, I think it is important that those be dealt with on a country-by-country -country basis, uh, taking all other elements into consideration in the relationship. So sure. giving the executive the tool is one thing, requiring the executive to use it without any other considerations, I would have concerns about. So, Mr. Tilson, I understand your testimony. You're saying it was mandatory. You would not be able to advise the president to sign it because you want to have the president deflect, have the flexibility to decide which countries to sanction and which ones to not sanction. Under which circumstances to sanction? In essence, because you want to be able, for example, to take other things into account, like, for example, the desire to perhaps improve relations with that country, uh, and therefore the president maybe doesn't want to sanction them, even though they're attacking us. There could be a whole uh, array of important issues that require consideration, including trading issues, trade relation issues, uh, mutual uh, agreements around our national security. So I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's appropriate, and certainly for me at this time, to indicate that I would just say that it's a blanket a blanket application. I think that is the role uh, of the of the executive branch. It is the role of the Secretary of State and the State Department to assist and inform the President in, judge, in judgments about how to use what is a clearly powerful tool. Well, again, I mean, what's troubling about your answer is, is the implication that somehow if there is some country that uh, we're trying to improve relations with or have significant economic ties with, the President, you may advise the President not to uh, impose sanctions on that country, on individuals in that country, out of concern that it could da damage our are the rest of our relationship with them on a cyber attack, which is a direct attack on our national security and our electoral process. So let me ask you, would you advise the president-elect to repeal the Obama administration's recent executive orders regarding cybersecurity and Russian interference in the 2016 elections? I think the president-elect has indicated, and if confirmed, I would support that uh, what's really required is a comprehensive assessment 
of our cyber threat and cybersecurity policies. Uh, in my view, based on what I've been able to uh, read and have been briefed, we do not have a cybersecurity policy. We do not have a comprehensive strategy around how to deal with what has been a rapidly emerging threat. But and Mr. as I Tilton, said, we're seeing it manifest itself in ways that we never envisioned. But Mr. Tilton, I understand the cybersecurity plan. We have to have one to protect ourselves and handle cyber attacks against our country. That is separate from the question of whether people that have already conducted attacks should be sanctioned and singled out. There's an executive order that is now active uh, that has sanctioned those individuals. And my question is, do you believe that executive order should be repealed by the incoming president? Uh, if confirmed, Senator, I would want to examine it in all aspects of it when in consultation, not only with the president, but with other interagencies that are going to have input on this as to their views. Well, again, Mr. Tillerson, we, if, if in, all the executive order says is that certain individuals responsible for cyber actions against the United States will be sanctioned, and you still need to examine whether that's a good idea or not. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me ask you this question. Is Vladimir Putin a war criminal? I would not use that term. Well, let me describe the situation in Aleppo, and perhaps that will help you reach that conclusion. Uh, in Aleppo, Mr. Putin has directed his military to conduct a devastating campaign. He's targeted schools, markets, not just assisted the Syrians in doing it. His military has targeted schools and markets and other civilian infrastructure. It's resulted in the death of thousands of civilians. This is not the first time Mr. Putin is involved in campaigns of this kind. Back when he was just appointed prime minister before he was elected, and uh, I'm sure you're aware of that period of time, um, there was a series of bombings, and they blamed it on the Chechens. And Mr. Putin personally said that he would punish them, and so he ordered the Air Force to bomb the Chechen capital of Grozny. They used Scud missiles to hit hospitals, the city's main outdoor market, packed with shoppers. 137 people died instantly. They used thermobaric and fuel air explosive bombs. These are the bombs that ignite and they burn the air breathed in by people who are hiding in basements. They use cluster munitions. He used battlefield weapons against civilians. And when it was all said and done, an estimated 300,000 civilians were killed, and the city was completely destroyed. By the way, there's a credible body of reporting, open source and other, that this was all, all those bombings were part of a black flag operation on the part of the FSB. And if you want to know the motivation, here's what it is. Putin's approval ratings before the attacks against the Chechens was at 31 percent. By mid-August of that year, it was at 78 percent in just three months. So based on all this information and what's publicly in the record about what's happened in Aleppo and the Russian military, you are still not prepared to say that Vladimir Putin and his military have violated the rules of war and have conducted war crimes in Aleppo. Now, those are very, very serious uh, charges to make, and I would want to have much more information before reaching a conclusion. I understand there is a body of record in the public domain. I'm sure there's a body of record in the classified domain, and I think in order, in order to deal with a serious question like this, Mr. Chillerson, the, what's happened uh, in Aleppo is be, in the public I would domain. Want to be the videos and the pictures are there. Fully informed before advising the president. Well, I encourage you, there is so much of it. There is so much information out there about what's happened in Aleppo, leaving the Chechen issue aside. What happened there is clearly documented as well. There's so much information out there. It should not be hard to say that Vladimir Putin's military has conducted war crimes in Aleppo because it is never acceptable, you would agree, for a military to specifically target civilians, which is what's happened there through the Russian military. And uh, you know, I find it discouraging, your inability to, to cite that, uh, which I think is globally accepted. I want to, in my last minute and a half here, move really quickly to an additional question. In fact, I want to enter two things into the record, Mr. Chairman, without objection. Without objection. The first is a partial list of political dissidents, journalists, and critics of Vladimir Putin who were suspiciously murdered or died under highly suspicious circumstances. The second thing I want to enter into the record is a letter uh, addressed to this committee uh, by Vladimir Karza Murza, who himself was mysteriously poisoned and is an opponent of the Putin regime. I'd like to enter that into the record. Without objection. Uh, Mr. Tillerson, do you believe uh, that Vladimir Putin and his cronies are responsible for ordering the murder of countless dissidents, journalists, and political opponents? I do not have sufficient information to make that claim. Are you aware that People who oppose Vladimir Putin wind up dead all over the world, poisoned, shot in the back of the head. And uh, do you think that was coincidental, or do you think that it is quite possible, or likely, as I believe, that they were part of an effort to murder his political opponents? Well, people who speak up for freedom 
in uh, regimes that are repressive are, are often a threat, and, and, this, and these things happen to them. Uh, in terms of assigning specific responsibilities, I would have to have more information. You know, as I indicated, I, I feel it's important that it, in advising the President, if confirmed, that I deal with facts, that I deal with sufficient information, which means having access to all information, and I'm sure there's a large body of information that I've never seen that's in the classified realm. Uh, I look forward, if confirmed, to become com becoming fully informed, but I am not willing to make conclusions on what is only publicly available or have been publicly reported. None of this is classified, Mr. Tillerson. These people are dead. Uh, their political opponents are your dead. Question was, your question was people who were directly responsible for that. I'm Senator not disputing these people are dead. Senator Menendez. 